Hi guys, this is Diane here from Design Creative. I am a web designer and a WordPress consultant that helps designers, agencies, and entrepreneurs get the most out of using WordPress for their business. Now today, we are going to be talking about backing up your shit. Yes, that's right. A large majority of you guys do not back up your site and you must know that not backing up your site basically means that you don't give a shit about your website. So today we are going to give a shit and we're going to do that by installing this plugin uh, by a company called WP Vivid and they've created a plugin called WP Vivid Backup. They've actually released a pro version. It literally just came out of beta maybe a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Um, but I'm not gonna show you the pro version yet. We are just going to stick with the free version because I know some people get annoyed that every time I do a tutorial, it's always on a pro version. But that's because I'm serious, guys. I kind of, when I'm into something, I get into it. So anyway, in this tutorial, we are going to download WP Vivid and I'm gonna show you how you can actually configure it on your website. So let's go into our WordPress site now. This is a very empty site. It has one page and one post, probably not worth backing up, but I'm gonna do it anyway. First thing we wanna do is go over to plugins, click on add new, and you can just type in backup. It should be the third or the fourth one. Yeah, it's the fourth one here and it's called Migrate and Backup WordPress WP Vivid Backup Plugin. Just, I often know it either by this icon or by the fact it says WP Vivid here. It's quite a long um, title, but at least you get to know exactly what it is. What you wanna do is you just wanna activate that on our website. Now, the free version of this um, plugin is actually quite feature rich. The pro version, is very feature rich as well. But like I said, I do just wanna concentrate on the free version because we need freeness right now and we need to make sure that our website is backed up. But most importantly, that we can schedule our backups. A lot of uh, backup plugins uh, give you very basic features, um, but in terms of scheduling, sometimes they don't add that, sometimes they add that into the pro, but luckily for us with this plugin, you actually get that for free. So let's start. First of all, you can back up manually and you can back up to a directory or you can back up to remote storage. I'm just gonna call, uh, choose local storage for now. You can also uh, choose what you want to back up. So you can choose database and files, you could choose just the WordPress files, or you could choose only database. Um, I would always recommend uh, backing up uh, your database and your files at the same time, always. Um, and another thing I really like about this as well is that you can choose if this backup can be manually deleted and we'll talk more about that in a minute when you do run a backup it, you will see the backup will be added here so let's actually do that now okay so now the backup is done you can see down here it says that it is in our local storage it was a manual backup it was done at this time on this date. Yes, don't look at the fact that it's two o'clock in the morning. Clearly I have no life. And here it says that we can restore it and we can also delete it, okay? Now, even though I chose for it to be in a local storage, I don't fully recommend saving your backups to a local storage. I do, recommend saving it to a remote storage. And I'm gonna give you two reasons why. So the first reason why is because you don't want to clog up your hosting space with tons and tons and tons of backups of your website. I've gone to certain websites where it's literally like, I don't know, um, maybe five or 600 megabytes big um, but they have 20 gigabytes worth of backups 
on their hosting space and now their hosting provider is pissed. So the best thing to do um, is to put it on a remote storage. Another reason why I think you shouldn't do it on a local storage is because if your website does get corrupted or somebody does go in and fiddles around with stuff or it gets hacked into, you they could possibly hack into these backups as well. So I personally think it is way better to make sure that you have it on a remote place. Um, and of course you can choose where that remote place is going to be. So I'm going to actually click up here where it says remote storage and it gives you different options of where you can store your backups. Google Drive is one, Dropbox is another, um, Microsoft OneDrive, who the hell uses that? I don't know. Um, I personally love using Dropbox. It's super easy to set up and I've just always had Google Dropbox. I've always had Dropbox, so it's just, it's not even a thing. So I'm going to add the name of this storage. So I'm going to call this uh, learning uh, backup or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, and it says all backups will be uploaded to this directory. So if you've got a Dropbox account, they usually um, is a folder in there called apps. If you've connected other apps to your Dropbox, it usually would go into here. So that's where you would find it. Um, so here as well, it's saying you can set that as your default storage. And I'm going to click here to authenticate. Um, so then we could use it. Okay. So that has now been done. That was so quick. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I wasn't even sure what happened there. Okay, so that's now being set up. And now what I can do is I can click here where it says send back up to remote storage. And now that can actually get backed up to my Google Drive, to my Dropbox, I mean. Okay, so now the backup has been done, it will say, you know, please uh, switch to log page to check the details. And now when you look down here, you could see that we've made a manual backup and it has been saved to um, our Dropbox. You can also see that we have this download button. So at any time, we can just download these files as well to our desktop if we need to. So even though it is stored on our local machine here, we can download this file, save it to our desktop, and then we can delete it from here if we need to. Though I probably, mm, I yeah, I would delete it from there if it's a local storage for sure. Right, so let's now talk about scheduling. We want to schedule our backups because we don't want to be coming to our website every day and manually backing up the website. That's going to be boring. So we want to enable um, a backup schedule. And if you get the pro version, you can actually do a lot more things with your scheduled backups. Okay. Um, so it's probably worth having a look at the pro version, but for now, we're just gonna stick with the basics because we just need to get this thing backed up. So what I would recommend, uh, depending on the type of site you have and the type of traffic you have, if you're a medium-sized website that gets relatively medium-sized traffic, I would say daily backups would be good for you. If you're an e-commerce site, that gets quite a bit of traffic, medium to high traffic, I would uh, put this at 12 hours. And if there's a way to, if you did have the pro feature, you may even be able to bring that down. I know that I have a website that is quite high trafficked and it's a events 
website and we have to have backups every half an hour <laughs> for that one just to make sure and it's mainly database backups really just to make sure um that if anything does happen we have like very up-to-date backups if your website doesn't have that much traffic and you don't really visit it that much then you can go for like weekly or fortnightly or monthly but i would probably go for a weekly uh, back up because if you are one of those people who you have a website but you don't check it you may check it like once a month um, if something happens during that time um, at least you've got backups from before you know so I would definitely stick to weekly daily or hourly depending on the type of website that you have and of course um, Again, like I said, I would always um, include everything. That would be the database and the files. Though with the events website that I was talking about and even with e-commerce sites, I would definitely recommend um, having another backup, another schedule where you can just do the database as well. Um, and here it's asking us where do we want to save it? And I'm going to say we want to save it in our Google um, in our Dropbox. I keep saying Google Drive for some weird reason, but in our Dropbox. So we can save these changes here. And now we have our schedule up and running. Now, another thing we might wanna do is look into the settings area, because here we can choose how many backups um, we can retain. So like I said before, it really depends on the type of website that you have and the amount of backups that you are going to have. So um, with, um, with like, I guess, monthly backups, you probably want to have like the last four months. If it was weekly backups, then you would probably want to have the last four or five weeks. If it's daily backups, you may want you know, a whole week's worth. If you get the pro version, you're definitely able to, uh, to have more backups. So again, this is really down to how you want to do it. I know with, um, uh, with the events website that I was managing, um, we had 60 database backups at, ever, at all times. Um, and we just continued doing that because it was quite high traffic and we just wanted to make sure that everything was safe and secure, which 99.9% .9 of the time it was. So um, that's uh, that's just something to be wary of. Um, another thing you want to do, let's have a look, is if you do end up storing your backups um, and you've got quite a lot of out of date ones, you can also just click here to remove them. And that's a really good, I really like this feature because it stops you from having to like log into FTP and delete them or log into your Dropbox account and delete them. So it's nice to be able to do that here. You can also enable uh, a report. So if it fails, um, you'll get an email or when it's completed, you'll get an email. You also get to save on any disk space, which again is a really handy feature to have if you're quite pedantic about that. And if you want to export these settings and you know keep that as a, a template or a boilerplate um, for other websites that you create with WP Vivid, you can do so and then you could just import the uh, settings without you having to uh, go through everything again. So I'm just going to save these changes. Uh, let's go back into the settings. And we are going to click on the advanced settings. So here, you may use this, you may not. Um, this is for optimization mode for web hosting or shared hosting. And this is only really used for when your backup fails. So if you have a website where you know your hosting is shit basically and you have you back up and it keeps timing out then this may be a good feature for you to turn on and hopefully it will start working from there too you can also compress your files so um if you've got quite a big website 
and you do get a lot of timeout errors, you can actually split the uh, files up into chunks and it will just make it easier for it to download and you won't get any problems and here you can choose the settings for all of that here so that is a really another like interesting and quite um uh, a good fallback because a lot of these plugins that we download especially backup plugins, when you do something like this, they don't really have that option of, you know, chunking it up or um, uh, understanding that there's a lot of shit hosting out there, so they may have to optimize it. So this is a really cool feature to definitely have. So now we have all our backups. Um, our site is now ready. And we can just leave that now. So here it's gonna say the next backup that's gonna happen is going to be, they've just done one now, today is Saturday, so the next one is gonna to be tomorrow, okay? Um, I would say that when you do schedule, um, it's worth coming to your site and checking that the backups have been done. I know this is a weird like counterproductive uh, thing, but some websites or some hosting companies um, have very bad Chrome jobs. And a Chrome job is basically like a command that the website will send to the ser that, that, that server runs to say, do these and do this, these type of tasks at this certain time for this duration or whatever. And sometimes web hosts uh, block Chrome uh, commands for some weird reason. So um, I definitely noticed this when I was using uh, a plugin for another website that um, it wasn't working properly. So it's worth having a look here um, and um, seeing that you're getting backups on a regular basis. That's if you are not going to be using the email report. If you are going to be using the email report, then you don't have to worry. You will constantly get an email. But um, I would definitely say it's just worth checking out, making sure that your server is running the commands and they are backing up. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. Please make sure that you back up your websites before you update any plugins, okay? And before you update WordPress, before you make any major changes to your website, just always make sure that you back it up, even if you have got it on scheduled, um, because you don't want to be the person who lost all of their uh, work, and you definitely don't want to be the person who lost all of their client work. Speaking of client work, I would highly recommend that when you are in the development phase of your clients projects when you are just creating the website for them make sure that you have a backup plugin as well you know you don't have to have a backup plugin on a, a production site um, always have them on the development sites as well because if that goes down then you're really screwed okay so I hope this tutorial has been good. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy the content. And yeah, let me know. Is there any other backup plugins that you guys use? I love this one and I also love WP uh, Migration. Um, I absolutely love that one. Um, I think I've got another tutorial. I might even just show that tutorial somewhere here. But yeah, if you can check that out, that one out as well, you'll really love that one too. Thank you for watching and I will speak to you later.